Now, this is a very important week in our history, on our calendar. On Saturday, we kick off Reconciliation Week and it marks two milestones in Australia, the 19... 19- 67 referendum and the historic Mabo decision. Now, in this year, two significant anniversaries in Australia's rec- reconciliation journey will be celebrated. 50 years since the 1967 referendum. That's incredible. 50 years. And 25 years since the historic Mabo decision. I'm joined in the studio by Narita Saunders, the Executive Director of the Aboriginal Affairs and Reconciliation Department of State Development, as well as Professor John Carty, who is the Head of Anthropology SA Museum, and he's also the curator of the Yadaki Exhibition. Also, Rebecca Richards from South Australian Museum Early Career Cadet Anthropology. Good afternoon, everybody. It's lovely to have you in the studio. Professor, I'll start with you. How did the Yadaki exhibition come about and what can people expect to see at the museum? Well, it it came about, I guess, as part of a process of we're rethinking our museum, Mm -hmm. Um, not just as a place that um, holds archives of Aboriginal culture. Like, we have the most important collection of Aboriginal culture in the world here in Adelaide at the South Australian Museum, which a lot of your listeners wouldn't even know that. No, that's a really good claim to find. It's an extraordinary fact, and and I came to the museum a year ago to um, rethink what our responsibilities are to those collections and to the to Aboriginal people around the country in in holding them, Mm. and um, and of rethinking the museum, not just as an archive, but as a a site of reconciliation, a place where we could explore um, some of these important sort of political and and cultural themes that are being played out in Reconciliation Week, but to do it all year, (laughs) every year, you know. Um, That's nice. Yiraki came out of that that change in culture, I guess, at the museum. Um, It's an exhibition that is about didgeridoos. Yeah. Um, the only word is, is yiraki. Um, but it's about taking our audience, uh, not just putting them on the wall in cases with labels, as you often get in a museum, mm. but saying to our, our audience, this is the sound of Australia. This is the iconic sound of your country, and you probably don't know much about it. And so I worked with the Yongu custodians up in Arnhem Land at the top of Australia for right. the whole of last year, collaborating with them, you know, in, in, a, in a reconciliatory kind of process yeah. to, to tell a story on their terms and to use the museum as a, as a theatre. And, and we, instead of creating an exhibition about didgeridoos, we, we sort of created a forest. So it's a, in, in the South Australian Museum now, instead of an exhibition full of sticks of wood, you yeah. get... Um, Basically, we've replanted Arnhem, Arnhem Land, Yongu country, oh, on North Terrace. Uh, it's a stringy bark forest with resonating floors so you can feel the instruments humming beneath you. Oh, wow. um, the trees, the, all the instruments are in trees, so the trees are talking back at you. There's no labels, so there's none of me saying this was collected in 1935 by mm. Tyndale. <laughs> it's the Yongu custodians telling you this is our culture and we want to share it with you. So this we is... can literally feel it, smell it, touch it. Because many of us, Arnhem Land, you see in movies and it's incredible, but to go there and experience it is, well, it's near impossible, isn't it? Yeah, and, and here it is on North Terrace. So it's this really, it's this great generosity of the Yongu uh, custodians as well to say, we want to share this story with you. Yeah, this I was going to say, they welcome know, it with open arms. Yeah, it's like everybody, you know, that you get caught up in reconciliation about the politics and yeah. about the big questions and it's like, it, it's not that complicated. You know, mm. we're all humans. It's about listening to each other and sharing stories and, and probably feeling like some of those Aboriginal stories and narratives that that maybe you don't get at school that maybe we have to go back and get as adults is that's part of the process of reconciliation is just getting involved going and seeing an exhibition or watching a movie or reading a book that just makes you feel a little less ignorant about our history you know and also how nice that we don't have to get political about it we can learn the stories from going to a museum and experiencing life as it was so many years ago. Yeah, and as it still is. That's the glory of the show is like these these, uh, these experts up in Arnhem Land are still 
cranking out amazing yidaki every day. Really? It's it's a daily daily part of life. It's like a kid in Adelaide walking around with a football under his arm. Yeah. Little Yongu guys are walking around holding a yidaki every day, just playing it. They they pull out their mother's vacuum cleaner pipe and take that with them, and they'll use that vacuum cleaner pipe as a yidaki if they don't have their own didgeridoo. How it's this cool. thing of like it's just day to day life. You yeah. Know? It's not it's not all this politics. It's just about. Australians understanding other Australians and and getting a sense of wonder and excitement and respect for Aboriginal culture that um, comes out of just sharing stories. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Yudaki and what it means to the Yulungu and you know how do they use it and why and you know and it's such an iconic Australian sound, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you've touched on that. Well, I think I think most of us would you know you'd you'd walk through Rundle Mall, you'll see some some hippie playing uh, a didgeridoo and you'll think it's just that but um, it's actually this you know it's like you need to have an appreciation of classical music to be a connoisseur you need the same kind of level of appreciation um, for Yiraki music because it's it's all based on this incredible nuance of Yongu language oh, of, right. of the tone that because all the trees are hollowed out by termites so they all sound a little bit different and every instrument is different and so it's it's like every violin player has a has a perfect instrument. Every yidaki player has an, a perfect instrument. But what our exhibition tries to say is not only is this a form of music that all Australians should know more about. Um, it's not just a stereotype or a cliche that you you see from a busker, but there's a whole tradition built around it. Mm. Um, it's not just a, a musical instrument though; it's a social instrument. Um, it's a healing instrument, like it's used because it's a, a vibration. A lot of uh, people use yidaki as a form of healing, played into the body, um, right. which is really a really beautiful thing to experience. You can understand why, can't you? Because yeah. it does. It just vibrates well, it's your pure whole body. Vibration. Mm. So yeah, you know, there's good little, to put babies to sleep with it too. It's great, actually, <laughs> it's great for babies. And we've had at the museum lots of kids because we've built what we call thunderboards. Yeah, they're resonating floors so that you can feel the instrument coming up through your feet. Um, a lot of kids just discovering for the first time that sound isn't uh, like just like a wind. Sound mm. is a thing that you feel. You know, we all know that as adults. You all have the music that you love, that you feel. Yeah. Um, but Yiraki is based on that idea that you have to feel music and feel your culture. And, yeah, what we're hoping is that, you know, we've got a, a forest with resonating floors and a lightning storm, and we want people to feel engaged in Aboriginal culture and in Australian history and, and in Australian present. And that's sort of our our work as a museum and getting people involved in reconciliation. It sounds spectacular. Rebecca, I wanted to ask you, and when, firstly, congratulations on, on being Australia's first Aboriginal Rhodes Scholar. That's incredible. Well done. Thank you. Um, you studied anthropology at Adelaide Uni, Uni before jetting off to Oxford. Uh, can you tell us about your experience as a Rhodes Scholar and, and what made you return to South Australia and, and work at the museum? Yeah, um, I am an Admatna and Bangla woman from mm -hmm. the Flinders Ranges and I actually got involved and interested in anthropology and museum work from people from the museum coming to work with my father when I was a teenager. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, the museum has played a crucial part in me deciding to do anthropology and going to Oxford and everything about that. Um yeah, so when I went to, like, I went to Oxford and to worked at the National Museum of Australia, but I came back to South Australia because we have some of the best collections in the world when mm -hmm. it comes to Aboriginal Australia, and I'm actually so um, amazed that my life has gone full circle and I'm actually able to appreciate the amazing collections that we have here in South Australia. That's obviously extremely important for you. How? Where do you want to take that in your career? You obviously want to add to the collection and 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 keep teaching everybody about, you know, Australia and and traditional Australian. Yeah, I'd love to continue in anthropology. I'm studying my PhD now at the University of Adelaide, whilst I'm working as an early career researcher at the South Australian Museum. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm so passionate about museums and collections and um, looking at traditional Aboriginal culture and recognising that, but also mm -hmm. looking at contemporary Aboriginal societies and cultures and saying we're still here, we've still got amazing cultures and um, practices and 
um, we're still part of Australian society and to have a dialogue with mm. um, non-Indigenous people is really important. Because that's probably not spoken about, is that when you talk about Reconciliation Week, you think history, you don't think today. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's um, so Reconciliation Week. We're like we're talking about like the nineteen sixty seven referendum and Mabo, but all those experiences they have so many connotations, not only for then, just for today as well. Um, uh, yeah, because I think it's important to recognise our history, but also go forward together in a new history. Because history is not just about the past, it's about what are we going to do in the future. We've got some tickets to give away to the Yidaki Museum and for your chance to win these tickets, stay tuned. We'll let you know after this quick break. Good afternoon. It is 10 minutes to 2 o'clock and you're chatting with Jade Robrin and in the studio with me now I'm joined by Narita from the Executive Director Aboriginal Affairs and Reconciliation Department of State Development. Also Professor John Carty, Head of Anthropology at SA Museum and the curator of the y uh, Yidaki exhibition, which sounds just awesome. And also Rebecca Richards, South Australian Museum, early career cadet and anthropology as well. And we're talking about Reconciliation Week. We're joined by a caller, Matthew from Happy Valley, has phoned in. Hey, Matthew. Hi, guys. How are you? Yeah, good. That's good. Um, I just was um, really curious. So I'm, I am from the mid north, and I have a lot of Aboriginal friends. And I remember talking to their parents when I was younger, and talking or hearing stories about when the settlers came in or the first the English to come in. They they used to take Aboriginal artifacts home. I was just wondering, is there a real effort for the um, museum to be bringing back those um, artifacts, or is, is that kind of something we just want to leave there and let the word be spread? I suppose. Oh, it's a good, it's a really good question, Matthew. I think that the the history of Australia is one in which a lot of material from Australia, a lot of the cultural heritage of Aboriginal people, um, was collected um, in different means um, and and distributed not just around Australia in museums but around the world. Um, so, I mean, I think when we see significant um, artefacts, say from Ghana people or Nurundjeri people or people from South Australia uh, overseas, um, and and there's an opportunity to bring them home. Um, uh, with with the local people, then the museum is really keen to do that. I think that the more South Australian um, cultural heritage is here in South Australia for all for all Aboriginal and non Aboriginal people in South Australia, the better. So um, it's not the museum's role it, it, legally to go and bring that stuff back, but if communities need help from us, then we're really keen to do it. Matthew, in, in regards to the return of um, heritage um, throughout South Australia that's retained by people in their backyards and their sheds, um, we would encourage them to make contact with the Department of Aboriginal Affairs through our heritage team. And, of course, we can then connect those individuals directly with the owners, if you like, the custodial owners of that material. Great idea. Narita, I also wanted to ask you, can you um, tell us about some of the things South Australia is doing to advance reconciliation with Aboriginal people? Yeah, the government continues a, a long journey in terms of reconciliation. Um, mm. More recently, of course, we've had the state's recognition of Aboriginal people um, in the state constitution. We've had the state government's apology to the Stolen Generations. We've obviously also had the setting up of the Stolen Generations reparations schemes, um, the six million to individuals and the five million to community reparations. And, of course, government agencies all have reconciliation action plans in which they engage with community and within their organisations about talking about what reconciliation means and about how they engage both not just in the actions but the genuine conversations that occur around righting of the wrongs but building future partnerships within colleagues mm -hmm. but within the organisation and its service providers and the broader community. We've obviously also been working around um, reframing, if you like, the relationship between Aboriginal people and government um, to promote stronger engagement uh, between the government and Aboriginal people. Um, so we've developed a pol policy called the Aboriginal Regional Authority, which is really about um, strengthening Aboriginal community governance structures, mm -hmm. um, where Aboriginal people determine how they, they, they self-govern, and for government um, to recognise the authority that Aboriginal representative organisations have, and about how we then engage with them around setting some of the future directions. 
The theme for this year's Reconciliation Week is take the next steps. Is that what South Australia is attempting to do with the treaty discussions? What are some of the other steps we need to take? Certainly, as I've explained, there's been, we're on a journey and, of course, from regional authorities and recognising and, and acknowledging the authority of Aboriginal voices across the state, um, treaty is the next step in terms of what does it mean? What do, what do South Australian Aboriginal people see treaty? Mm -hmm. How does that actually work in the conversations with government? And about how can we move this agenda forward together? What that means and what that looks like. But there are obviously also other parts of the reconciliation journey that we still need to continue to focus on. Things like access to education, access to housing, employment, real opportunities for Aboriginal businesses in terms of how they engage um, in the prosperity, if you like, of this state. It's been 50 years since the referen referendum which gave the Commonwealth the power to make laws for Aboriginal people and for Aboriginal people to be recognised in the national census. It was Australia's most successful referendum, wasn't it? It was. It was 97% of, the, of, 97 of the, the country actually stood up and said yes to acknowledging and recognising Aboriginal people. So that was a magnificent feat and one that's not been repeated. <laughs> Can you talk us through some more of the events that will be happening across the state during Recon Reconciliation Week? Across the, the community, there are a range of activities that are, that are run and organised by community groups and sound, by government agencies, by mm -hmm. um, different organisations, and people can find them out by going on to different websites, and we can leave our website for the Aboriginal Affairs um, for information. But equally, there is a, uh, a number of known events, such as the Lord Mayor's, um, events. Mm -hmm. um, the South Australian Government will also be doing a dinner on Friday night to recognise the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. um, of the referendum and we'll obviously also be undertaking a name, number of activities within organisations as well. And then there's the Aboriginal Power Cup as well at Alberton, which people can get involved with. Uh, the Karuna Walking Tours. The Garner Walking Tours, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We can really, the whole state can really get behind this, can't they, and, and learn a lot. Yeah. Yep, reconciliation really is about the process of, of Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people coming together as a, as a community, as a society, and about how we actually form mm. to come together to actually recognise we have a shared history, but we also have a shared future, and it's about how we actually work together to create the best opportunities for all citizens. We're moving in the right direction? I think we are. Everyone? We're getting there. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Good stuff. Thank you very much for joining me. And we've got a couple of tickets to give away to the museum. The Yudaki Didgeridoo and the Sound of Australia is a collaboration between the South Australian Museum and also the Yolongu people. Now, this special exhibition, as we just heard from John, explores Yudaki through sound, story, moving image and rarely seen treasures from the South Australian Museum's collection. And for your chance to win a family museum membership, a special tour of the current Yidaki exhibition and a $25 museum cafe voucher. Simply listen out for this sound throughout the show. <laughs> That's that beautiful sound that John we were talking about early on. It is, it is, it just vibrates the whole body, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it it's does. gorgeous sound. It gives, you, it gives you chills. I think when you hear that sound overseas, you get this sense of um, home, of homesickness, of home. But we don't really know what that means. So, yeah, come along to the South Australian Museum and find out. Fantastic. Thank you, Narita, John, and Rebecca, for your time. Stay.